Okay, so today I want to talk about um, the power I reach in, in Texas and the decisions that they now have in hand of the possibility of how to upgrade their systems. Um, so uh, an, arti an article from Vox Media, um, a reporter from then, uh, suggested five um, solutions for their problem. Uh, and I want to concentrate in two of them. Um, so their problem is basically because they are isolated as, um, as doing their own energy instead of like the other states are part of the interconnection of the other states. And also because they were not prepared for the weather. So one of the solutions is to build out their, their systems grids. And the other one is a little bit more simple but I still consider important is the demand um, rise of responses. So the bill out is um, is to work the the grids and to do more of them to give the possibility for the wind and the solar systems to reach out to more people. And they are also new new grids that will um, be more resistant to the weather, the cold weather, and that they will be faster into being replaced and being rebuilt. Um, so there will be better responses for the people. Um, and the uh, demand rise responsive is very simple things that people can do to support each other. So for, it, it is important that the president responded with some, hey, well, on the same way, um, for, for Texas, for the people that still have power, they can contribute uh, with reducing their own electricity or picking different hours that are not the peak hours to actually help and provide electricity for the people that lost not have it. Um, this, is pr it, this was written by uh, the WFAA, uh, which is a reporter from the, the television that manages a, a bunch of other TV channels. So they consulted the experts for this. And finally, I would just like to say this will be an action that they can take immediately since they are uh, working on repairing the, the transmission grids. They can build up for prevention. They can recover faster. Um, these grids will be more resistant. It is an eco solution. And finally, um, I would like to leave with a quote from Elizabeth Warren. Uh, the choice of us is simple. Will we continue to subsidize the dairy fossil fuels of the past, or will we the transition to the 21st century clean renewable, renewable energy? Yeah. So like nine ten or resources? 
Yeah, it, it is the one that produces more energy, obviously. There's, there's tons of work and there's reliability for many years about the sources, so there's like persistence about changing. Um, can gas, oil, coal be turned into sustainable? I'm sorry, I'm giving you a bunch of hard questions. But and that's that's one of those kind of situations where you're you're looking at certain types of uh, fuel sources that are not renewable. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to look at renewable sources as sustainable. So there does need to look at some kind of other options. I know that's why they're looking again at nuclear, which they haven't looked at in probably 30 years in the United States. Yeah, so there's a lot of questioning. Um, I don't know if we're still good on time. Oh. <laughs> we're good? You're good. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's there's still a bunch of questions about uh, solar powers and wind and what is it able, the materials. If there are, n not like the energy production, but the materials itself, if they're contaminated. So there's fluorine, like gas, they say, well, gas is already cleaner. Um, they're purifying coal now and saying that it's 95% more cleaner um, than what it used to be. And, but I don't know, I just want to believe in solar, <laughs> solar panels on wind. I don't know, um, I don't know so much of this is true. And if it applies, it will be good to see if it applies for like coal companies and things like that. Do they have like products, materials that are damaging as well and they're just like just talking bad about solar panels 